In this video, we have done it. We have reached Horopito Motors. Possibly the most remarkable scrapyard in the world. Now, I know that's a bold claim to make and that um, uh, there are some very impressive scrapyards um, in America with um, similar backdrops in some cases. We've got snowy mountains behind us. I think that's Mount Ruapeo. Um, I w would like to explore that, but needs must. This needs exploring first. But it, it, of course, there's so many European cars here. Um, it isn't just, um, I mean, there's a bit of Americana in here. There's some locally produced stuff. There is um, a Mark I Cortina estate. Several, in fact, I think. Um, so I think the best thing to do is to crack on and have a mooch around. I might just park my car somewhere a little more out of the way, just, just to make sure they don't accidentally scrap it. So yes, this is Horopito Motors behind me. It's been open for decades. Uh, it's just vast amounts of um, scrap sitting in fields. Um, some, of, some of these cars will be broken for spares. Um, others are just straight bailed, but some have been sitting here for a very long time. And uh, there's interesting vehicles everywhere you look. I mean, here we've got an Austin Shear line, um, the 125. Look at the size of the headlamps. Um, maybe that'll live again one day. Maybe it won't. Um, let's just start ambling around the yard. You have to pay. Uh, it's $10 admission and you get to look around this remarkable place. There's a um, Chrysler Valiant there. There's a Toyota Camry here with the twin rear wipers. That's desirable. I think I really do need one of those in my life. And as we come in the back here, we've got um, a Singer Vogue of the um, arrows shape. Uh, that, that's quite nice. Maybe that's been fixed up. There's a Morris Minor here. But yeah, we've got the old buildings. Got a Toyota Levin here. Uh, front wheel drive, not the original rear wheel drive ones. But um, really it's the fields of scrap that are the most interesting here. So I think without further ado, We'll start having a mooch around. So we've got some um, rotten BMC stuff for starters. That's an A50 Cambridge and I've got a road test of one of those coming up very soon. Um, Chris, if there are any bits you need, you, you might find them here. You never know. And uh, Riley Elf duo there on top of each other. Then we're into Ford Capris, uh, plentiful uh, little Fiat 500 Bambina. Uh, that's um, looking very rusty, although given how long it's sat in the field, maybe it doesn't look that rusty. But um, there's some big American stuff I don't recognise. Oh, so the Mark II, Dualis, a Suzuki Beleno. Uh, this could be a Vauxhall Astra. Uh, yeah, it does say GSI. I don't think it's a Pontiac Le Mans. No, it is an Opel Astra, GSI. There we go. Uh, some more stuff I just don't recognise, but I'm guessing is probably um, Aussie built. Uh, big Wolseley, big Farina there. Uh, wow. It's just incredible. And then you see the mountains peeking through in the background. It's, uh, yeah, it's like nowhere I've ever been. I'm like a kid in a candy store here. Oh, that looks like someone might have been restoring it at some point. All finished in primer grey. Um, let's go see what we can find down here. So 100E Ford there. Hillman Minx probably sold here as a Humber 80. And another one. Um, Holden. <laughs> that was once upon a time. And, uh, hmm. That's either a Fiat or a Mazda. They were both styled by Pininfarina, I think. Um, I think this is probably the Fiat. Uh, very rusty, but gorgeous, gorgeous um, foliage. Unfortunately, my microphone failed at this point, but that's an Austin Kimberley uh, with a rather dented roof. Uh, the Australian um, land crab deriver de uh, derivative, even. Uh, there you go, that said Kimberley. Uh, there's some rusty panels. Um, there's the straight six E-series engine. Uh, you 
not unique to these cars. These were the first cars to use that engine. But yeah, just look at this mass of rusted metal everywhere you look. Um, Horopito Motors is as remarkable as I was led to believe it was. Uh, that's a regular land crab there, rusting away, uh, various um, Holdens and um, Fords. Uh, I hadn't realized quite how many Ford Zephyrs there were here. Big Farinas over there. I love big Farinas. Uh, yeah, this is really difficult. I'm trying to remember what I was looking at next. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, I've had one microphone die on this trip. So now I'm having to um, make it up as I go along. But just look at the beauty. I mean, everywhere I turn, it kind of, it's a fresh calendar picture. It's lost in A35 with a larger rear window there. Um, uh, Zephyr Mark III, I think. Oh, no, no, maybe that wasn't one of those. Um, it's so hard to remember when you're not actually there. But there's a rear engine Skoda on the left. I'm just trying to pick my way through it. That door had completely rusted off. Uh, but yeah, rear engine Skoda. Uh, the 1000 MB and that sort of type, pre-Estelle. Lovely things, actually. Uh, the yard over the other side, which we haven't even looked at yet. But here's a Hillman Minx, probably a Humber badged here. Um, I think they were California Coupes. Uh, very rare. I can't actually remember seeing one, but there's one. That's another rear-engine Skoda. Um, probably another Minx of a later type. Uh, just so much rot. I think that's an international bus there. But here is a Zephyr 4, I think. Oh, it could have been a 6, but there's no engine in it. It was a single headlamp type. But I can't remember if you got single headlamps on the um, V6s or not. Uh, can't remember. There was no console of that type. It was just Zephyrs and Zodiacs. Uh, but yeah, there's a Toyota Crown over there. And, uh, yeah, what a, just a sea of um, absolute beauty. I could probably edit this down, but um, you probably don't want that, and I certainly didn't want. Let's go and have a look, closer look at this Toyota Crown, uh, covered in lichen. Uh, have a peek inside. Uh, I'm not lingering because I was trying to show you as many cars as possible, but there you go. Tasty velour. And I tried shutting the door. That was as shut as it went. Wolvesley Land Crab there. Ford Prefect. Uh, not entirely sure what that one is. Uh, that's a standard Vanguard. Uh, very nice. Um, what's over here then? More rust. I have no idea what that is, this van. But by heck, it was rotten. And um, yeah, at this stage, I was struggling to get around the field because they were packed in so much. It was a complete health and safety d d disaster area, really, but they did have signs telling you it was a health and safety disaster area. So as far as I'm concerned, that's all good. Um, yes, yeah, a Humber Hawk there, I think. Um, of a series one to four, I think. Before they changed the roof. Um, Ford Cortina, by the look of it. And um, I'm going to have to start jumping over cars because I want to be over there. Here we go. Jumpity jump over these cars. Because they're such old steel, proper metal, you can jump over them quite happily as it happens. There's the odd modern thing creeping in. Another side valve Ford. Um, there's the Astra GSI, Opel Astra. Um, oh, and now we've jumped into another sector. So we've got a Rambler on the right and a Plymouth on the left. Some poor um, soft top thing there. Ah, Nissan Prairie Joy which I'm showing off at this point because you don't see them very often. This one looks really clean. I've no idea what it's doing in a scrapyard. Um, but yes, this is the replacement for the second generation Prairie. First generation had a bonnet line that went straight down at the front. These later ones have a sticky out front. So um, they look very different. Uh, it also extended rear end on them as well. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to look. Trying to demonstrate the bonnet line, but I think we'll see one a bit later on, so that'll be all the good, and then we won't have to play such guesswork anymore. Um, so yeah, it goes down like that, is what I'm saying, the M11 type. I don't know if these are M12s, they might be. Um, I'm clutching at straws a bit. Uh, Toyota Caldina there, Jaguar S type, next to an Escort Mark VI van. Uh, there's a contrast for you. There were the first Escorts imported here, I think. Uh, a very, very rotten Jaguar XJ. 
um, which shows that these babies really do know how to rot. Oh dear, yes, not very nice. Uh, they were assembled in um, Nelson, I believe, on South Island, uh, the XJs. And we're going to have a mutual what's down here. Another XJ, slightly less twisted, but still hopelessly rot. There's more. Uh, Going to see what's down here. I think that's an FB Victor, maybe a Vauxhall, and it's to a big bus. And uh, I can't remember what I was saying at this point about that car. Probably that it's quite rusty. Um, it's a Subaru Saloon, very very rare. The uh, Leon or Leone. Uh, I'm not sure how you meant to pronounce it, but um, yeah, the Subaru Saloon and more rusty metal over there in the distance i didn't even get to look at that there's just too much to see uh we've still got more here um uh, minx underneath um 100e uh that's a simca around which i was not expecting i'm not sure why it's eating so many doors um sometimes it's hard to explain things but he has a section traction avant up there a rusty monocoque and a bmc 1100 next to a morris marina I suppose quite fittingly, keeping it in the family, both available with A-series engines. And uh, yeah, more rusty, rusty tin. But then I spotted this little uh, Mitsubishi Lancer. Um, absolutely adorable and uh, didn't seem too badly damaged, I didn't think. Looks quite clean, uh, clean arches. I was coming around for the look at the back. Lovely rear light, so it's a facelift of the first generation of Mitsubishi Lancer. It's got a louvered rear window. And uh, then I looked inside and it just looked lovely, really. I couldn't see an awful lot wrong with it. So I, I wound the window up because I wanted to try and preserve it. And um, yeah, it took a lot of self-control to um, not just um, put an offer in there and then. Truly, scrapyards are dangerous places. Um, so, yeah, what a lovely little thing. Uh, but I left it there and I moved on. And then I saw a later Lancer. Um, yeah, also quite nice. But, you know, you can't say for more, can you? There's an Avenger peeking out from the corner there. And uh, then I ran off to find yet more scrap. There's a Fiat 500 Bambina there, New Zealand assembled probably. Uh, next to the Ronde of many doors and uh, cruising round is just piles and piles of scrap. There's a back end of a Vitesse or a Herald there. Uh, there's a Mercedes forward control minibus there, something I'm not used to. I think you see them in Europe. There's a Daihatsu truck there, which caught my eye. Uh, quite a stylish looking beast or something. Uh, maybe not. Um, yeah, that's uh, roof chopped for you. Um, over here, we've got a Land Rover Discovery 2 sinking into the mud, although it looks brand new. Uh, that's a Chevrolet, maybe? Uh, minis. I, I know where I am with minis. Minis are much safer territory, and uh, those are definitely minis. Uh, here we've got a Fiat 600, uh, which is quite rare, but behind it, a Simca 1000 rear-engined or in this case no engined notice the radiator right up on the bulkhead uh quite stylish things we've got a mark one zodiac there and uh next to a 100e another humber that's actually a hillman super minx and uh, there's another one later one with a six light bodywork and uh, all the sad sad minis over here we've got a fiat um 1500 estate next to something old I don't even recognize. So this is the Fiat, uh, very rare estate. Um, you just do not see those at all. Really stylish Pininfarina styling, Thames Trader van there. Um, I think that might be an Austin A30 as subtle hints. And then as we come along this, there's an MG 1100 there by the look of it. That was probably a Zephyr Ute, um, a MG Farina. And uh, yeah, just so much old rammel that's just been sat here for decades. It's just, um, frankly, it's too much to take in. Uh, over here, um, Studebaker, I think that was. Uh, slightly odd styling, half of something. You can see the front end has just rot rot rotted off it completely. Um, over here, Fiat 500, next to a Fiat 850 Coupe. Um, very, very rotten indeed. Uh, the floors are pretty much gone. 
Um, so I thought I'd close the door. Oh no, the door is trying to fall off. Okay, we'll just leave the door there. That's all fine. And uh, a trekker, another trekker. Trekker sat in the scrapyard. Poor trekker, not looking in the best of shape. New Zealand's only car with Skoda running gear. Uh, Rover P4s all congregated together. That white one looks like it could drive out. It's even on all-terrain tyres, um, which is a bit unexpected. Um, oh, I love the look of these. I would love a P4. Uh, P6 is there behind as well. And uh, oh, let's go and have a look inside. Uh, I wish they got the sound hit at this point, but not not to be. Uh, that's the handbrake. Uh, I love the handbrake. It kind of looks like a walking stick. Um, yeah, lovely operation on it. And uh, when I shut the door, it just shut with a lovely clonk, uh, which sadly you can't hear, but it did. That door, not quite so good. Uh, literally rotted off. Um, the door skins on some of them were aluminium. Uh, that's a Voxel E-Type with a standard 10 on top. And uh, one last look at the P4s. Uh, what have we got over here? Rusty cars. There's a surprise. Uh, more and more of them. Of all ages, right back to the 1930s. Uh, there's two PA Cresters there from Vauxhall. Very, very rusty. Rusting into each other. Uh, it's almost romantic. Uh, uh, over here, something very old. I'd say Ford at a guess. Um, that's a Humber um, estate car, or a Hilmer Minx estate car, comma, maybe. Uh, Morris Miners, I, I got very excited at this point, because that is a low-light miner, a very early Morris Miner. They sold in New Zealand in some numbers. I know someone who imported one, in fact. Um, but yeah, I, I had to go and look at the miners. I couldn't believe it. There's a van there. Uh, it's another low light down there as well. Uh, it wasn't long before lighting regs meant the wings were changed to come up and um, show them off. And look, missing wiper. So sad. So sad. Uh, lovely old features inside. And yeah, just beautiful. You can see it's starting to rain on me at this point. Uh, that was starting to get a little tedious, if I'm honest. But uh, I couldn't stop. It was all just so amazing. Uh, that kind of looks a bit like a traveller would turn into a pickup of something. It's a bit odd. I wasn't in the Morris Minor. Never mind. Ignore that. Uh, another Land Crab, this time with a B Series engine, uh, as used in the MGB, but mounted transversely. More old miners. Um, some of these are uh, the slightly later Series 2, the ones with a split windscreen. Um, that one, I couldn't tell you whether it was a Series 1 or 2. Um, because the, the grill changed even when they changed the engine for the Austin engine um, in 1952. And uh, yeah, just have a poke around the back, see what else there is. More early cars. Just quite astonishing. Look, there's an early Morris Minor, he says. And um, yeah, Morris Miners are all around. And then there's really, really old stuff that I don't even recognise. What a place. Just spotted a Tasman. Um, Austin Tasman here, identifiable by the single headlamps. This is the lower spec version of a Kimberley. Um, oh, and there we go. It still has its um, E6 engine. The E6 engine was developed here in Australia and then used in models back in the UK. Look at that. Wow. Hot run tested and electronically tuned. Okay, by BMC. Someone's had the radiator out of it. But still a bit of oil in the sump. Another rear engine Skoda in there. Uh, what's that, Peugeot 404? Oh, incredibly tough cars, but not tough enough. In fact, there's a 504 behind it. Another 404 there. Wow, and that looks like the Mazda I was thinking looked like the Fiat. It actually looks really like a Mazda, Bertone style on those. Uh, and another Trekker. In fact, if there's a seat in it, I might get in it because it's uh, started raining quite badly. Oh. So here we are, sheltering inside a Trekker. And one thing I noticed at the Packard Museum is the gearbox 
is the wrong way round. So first and second are like that, and then you go over for third and fourth. Um, Skoda Octavia running gear. That's your indicator stalk there, I think. Uh, 72,000 miles on the clock. I'll just shut the window to keep the um, filth out of the rain. But yeah, quite remarkable. So yeah, I'm sheltering from the rain in a trekker. Uh, I didn't think that would happen. At Horopito Motors, I'm getting slightly annoyed by my beard. There's a bald bit just there, and it's creating unevenness in the beard. Oh, Morris Oxford MO, and um, yeah, just more and more stuff. Uh, I thought this was an MO, but it looks a bit long. It could actually be a six. Um, it's very, very dead, regardless. Um, moving around, um, there's an old Austin there. But look at this, a Simca Bertoni-styled coupe. Such pretty cars, so rare, because they rotted like you wouldn't believe. Uh, the roof seems to have rotted out on this one. I couldn't believe it though, seeing a right hand drive one of these, but that is, yeah, that's too far gone. That's the headliner hanging just beneath it. Um, so yeah, that one won't be coming back. Absolutely astonishing. Ford Corsair next to it there. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't want to leave it. It's got trees growing out of it, but um, yeah, it just shows what magic there is in this yard. Oh, then I started to um, peruse this entire field, but uh, I decided not to show you all of it. There's just too much stuff. Just look at it. Absolutely stacked up everywhere. Uh, the Mark 1 Jaguar here that looks like it was being restored at one point, um, but then someone seems to have hacked the rear quarter out of it. It's all a bit sad. It almost got saved and then didn't. This is an Albion truck, um, which I couldn't quite believe. Um, and on the back, a standard Vanguard 6, the final flowering of the Vanguard line. Uh, it was the first car, to, I think, to use the Triumph six-cylinder engine. Uh, so uh, standard Triumph had been bought together. Um, but then I decided to have a nose in the cab of this um, remarkable Albion. It was even said Albion on the pedals. And the uh, longest handbrake lever I've ever seen, I think. Um, but yeah, the show continues. I'm afraid there is a lot of this. I recorded over an hour of footage. Uh, I'm probably going to truncate this down a bit, but um, yeah, there's going to be quite a lot because look at the state of this shed. It's just absolutely remarkable. Uh, I needed to step backwards at this point, run out in the rain. I know it's sunny, it was still raining, and come down the other side where there's this old uh, Bedford truck which um, you know, used to be the Horopito Motor Wreckers truck of choice. Look at the interior. Ica Rumba, that's bright. And uh, I love the fact it says this vehicle is not insured um, because insurance is not compulsory. It's a very good idea in New Zealand, but it's not compulsory. And uh, my car is now insured, I would like to point out for the record. But yeah, look at that lovely old Bedford. I remember seeing those around as a child. Uh, British Telecom had quite a few. Yes, that is a Lancia Vita, and if that's not remarkable enough, the HPE, the um, estate version behind it. Uh, I was not expecting to see those there. And uh, if you look at this car, you might just find a little hubnut signature on it, um, because I'm very, very naughty. And uh, as we just continue through, there's another Zodiac there, or Zephyr 6, uh, it's the back of the Lancia Beta. Austin 7 body up there on top of a car. Uh, I was losing the will to live by this point. Uh, and uh, yeah, Vauxhall Velox there. Um, yeah, just astonishing. And um, yeah, I didn't even know what that was, some big American thing. I was trying to work out if it was a British car style to look like an American thing, but I think it was an American thing. And um, you can thank me afterwards. There's a Zephyr Mark II or a Zodiac Mark II looking at the colours. Please don't write on the body. Yeah, just a remarkable place. Uh, after waiting for another shower to pass, I headed out again um, into the rear yard to see what I might find. Uh, yeah, Merck's Renault 12. Um, the Mighty Dacia 
in a Renault form and an Austin A50 Cambridge. We did come on those. Viva HC Estate, another unexpected car. Just wasn't expecting to see something of that nature. Um, moving around, uh, headlamp wiper alert. A remarkable selection of Renaults. More twelves. That's a Fiat Chroma. I'm not sure what it's doing amongst the Renaults, but a Renault Fuego with another Renault Fuego behind it, and a Renault 25 pointing out the pantograph wiper for your amusement. Uh, just remarkable, and um, yeah, crusty twelves. Uh, at this point, I think I did some talking about the different wiper patterns. New Zealand assembled twelves have the wipers the same as in the UK. Uh, Australian ones don't, and hopefully we'll find an Australian one in Australia. But yeah, rims anyone? I'm not going to try and uh, lip sync myself. Uh, I'm walking through the very small museum section of Horopito Motors. They're trying to expand this side of things. And um, yeah, some very, very fine cars, and there's Model T forward there. And uh, also the Mini from Goodbye Pork Pie, uh, a quite famous movie apparently and uh, yeah check out what's here yeah it's a very impressive toyota corolla absolutely minty fresh it was from 1977 uh hadn't been on the road for a few years but absolutely remarkable condition ford model a i think behind it maybe possibly who knows um i don't but yeah more piles of crap all around here in the um, workshop toyota crown up there some very um, funky looking alloys and uh, yeah, just amazing. I would just pop under that air hose there and we're out into the yard again. There goes a RAV4, which has been used to hunt the parts around the uh, scrapyard by the staff. Little Morris 8 here, uh, Series E with a little bug eye headlamps. Oh, it's got extra headlamps on top because the original ones were so very, very, very poor. And uh, yeah, still more to see. So this is the other side of the road where we did the filming originally. That's where all the Fords are. There's lovely mountains, snow-capped mountains in the distance. Uh, I think that might have been Mount Ru Ruapeo. Um, I can't really confirm at this point, but certainly one heck of a scenic backdrop. The few um, volcanic mountains in the distance. Oh, there goes an Isuzu Bighorn. And fittingly, right in front of me are some Isuzu Bighorns. Inside the um, area of much excitement, that's a Toyota Tercel, a slightly later one. Loads of rusty earth moving equipment, old Fords. Yes, that is a Cortina Mark I estate up there, yet another one. And uh, yeah, wow, just um, amazing scenes. This is the Toyota section over here. Um, I think that's a Carina. Possibly coupe, liftback, and uh, a Corolla up there. We saw one of those at Japan Classic Sunday in the Netherlands in rather healthier condition. Gosh, how this stuff ru rusts. But yeah, just amazing. All these rare Toyotas might be worth some money somewhere. That's a um, Nissan Cedric there, I think. Um, yeah, just astonishing. Uh, rusty Fords are plenty. All these Mark One Escorts, I imagine those VIN plates would be worth an absolute fortune. And uh, Maxi there as well. Uh, a Mazda 929 Coupe, exceedingly rare car and uh, exceedingly dead. I know of one of those in the UK. I think it changed hands fairly recently. And uh, yet yeah, more Toyotas and Datsuns all piled on top of each other. Uh, I was having a look to see if I could find a Tercel estate. Uh, I didn't know if my luck would be in. Um, these are all much older, of course. And just so, so rotten. And Oh, yes, Skyline there. I think that's an R30 Skyline. Could be an R31. Uh, they were built in um, Australia, some of the Skylines. And uh, over here, Datsuns are plenty. And Toyotas. That's a Toyota Cavalier. I'd never heard of one. Toyota Crowns, several Toyota Crowns, it's just, oh, yeah, wow, uh, and then I spotted it, look, a Tercel, it might have been a Sprinter Carib, that was the Japanese name, but I'm still excited about Toyota Crowns, um, but um, let's go and have a look at this, um, Toyota Tercel, just like the one I recently acquired back home, um, the front wing seemed okay, maybe, 
um, maybe not too bad condition, but um, I'm not sure it was worth shipping it all the way home. This is the area that caught my eye. I need rear wings and rear wheel arches, but sadly, these ones are a bit crusty. And while they are actually there, and the ones on mine are completely gone, I didn't think it was worth trying to hack bits off to send home when they weren't really in perfect condition. Maybe a decision I'll regret, but notice the back axle has gone as well. I think it's fair to say that this one had definitely seen better days. And it was solid, sort of. And uh, the boot was um, home to many, many life forms. Um, so yeah, I'm capturing footage that may come in useful to try and remanufacture those areas. But look, the doors are all good. Um, yeah, <sighs> difficult decision. The interior, not quite so good. Blech. A, a day you um laganza and uh what are those, are those? Is that another mazda the orange one a uh, yellow one rather i think it is another mazda 1500 a honda city up there Honda the jazz in some markets in quite a lot of those over here the beetle shell up there uh ford falcon i think that's the falcon before mine oh, gosh Amazing. Uh, so now we're into Mitsubishi's. And there's a Mitsubishi Lancer up there as well, like the green one we found in the other field. But looking so, so sad. Oh. Sad times are upon us. Uh, what have we got here? We've got a Ford Laser as uh, Mazda base, which is why it's in the Mazda lineup, I'm guessing. Daihatsu Sherrard, I like those. Uh, Allegro. I've seen many Allegros here. There's another Simca Arond up there. That's just insane. Uh, right. Um, oh, hello. Rover SD1. Ah, oh, yes. Magnificent view. Uh, where was I going? Let's continue going this way. I think this way makes sense. Uh, a pile of rust. There. Whoa! Right, we're walking past that one, Citroen DS. It's a frog eye, so it's one of the earlier ones, up to about 67, I think. Uh, wow, Subaru Estate there. They're pretty rare, as are the saloons down there. It's got a rear wiper too. Very unusual for the 1980s. Subaru Estate of the same type as that saloon there. And uh, see a Land Rover in the distance. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, just a heap of Ford Falcons, I think, and um, Toyota Esteemers. Another Toyota Camry. This one raised high. I'm able to have its underpinnings removed. It's still got its two rear wipers, though. And, uh, oh, hello. What else have we got down here? Gosh, the mortal remains of a Toyota Thousand. I think Thames Trader. Um, some one thing that's missing most of it. Isuzu Piazza. Well, uh, a bit of an Isuzu gathering because it's an Isuzu. I think they're KBs those trucks. And a very rusty Peugeot 404. Uh, Bedford cab there. Another Ford Falcon or is it a Holden? No, that's the Holden nose. I think. Uh, old um, Dodge truck uh, that was under many names um, Renault at one point I think um, odd half cab truck bus thing uh, one of the Mazda coupes, the 626 I wonder if it was a four wheel steering one uh, we'll never know I don't think all information has departed I mean, I could look behind these wheels, but I'm not sure I can entirely move them. Uh, Lada, down there. Uh, yeah, oh, spinning around. Something else completely misshapen. More old trucks. Bedford TK cab. Holden estate there. Oh, just too much. And yeah, Nissan Serena. Or probably a Largo, I think, here. Uh, but yeah, there's the... Um, Larder and a, a Renault 21 Savannah that is an unusual sight here and uh, a sheep 
There's definitely a sheep over there. And four D series. Now these are interesting because um, I'm not sure it entirely counts as a pantograph, but you'll note this link bar that links to the end of the blade and um, and seems to stop you moving the blade. That, that's a clever bit of design. But as that comes up, and uh, I doubt it'll let me do it. Oh, it will. Um, yeah, you can see, you can see that angle is starting to increase, and um, so by the time it gets here, the blade is parallel to the edge of the screen. So I guess that does count as a pantograph wiper, really. There's an old bus here. I don't know what manner of bus this was. Um, no, that's not really much of a clue. Uh, if you know, uh, let us know in the description below. Uh, but yeah, Austin. I think that must be a Somerset. I don't think it's big enough for a Hereford, which was the biggest of that breed. Uh, Transit there, another MO Oxford. Oh gosh, it just goes on and on. Oh hello, Dodge Spaceman down here. I wasn't going hello about the sheep, just because I'm in New Zealand. Uh, for our limits. Uh, Mitsubishi I think. And uh, just before we get over there we've got um, some Bedford CS. Gonna have a nose in the engine bay here. Oh yes, that's a long engine. Uh, over here, they managed to cram the Holden six-cylinder in, straight six, because apparently the 2.4 liter slant four, 2.3 liter slant four, sorry, was not man enough. Uh, I'm not sure about that myself, but yeah, Dodge Space Van with roof removed and a Maestro van with some interesting adornments. I mean. Austin is fitting. They are Austins. Let's see what this Bedford's got in it. Yep, yep, that looks like the straight six as well, I think. Because the um, four cylinder engine is a slant four. Uh, I don't know if we can find one with a slant four in it. Ugh. Oh, yes, we, we sort of can, but they're not usually quite that slanted. Uh, that one has entirely fallen over, it seems. This is clearly Princess Corner, Van den Blas Princess, or Van den Pla Princess, and two Austin Princesses. They were actually badged as Austins and assembled in New Zealand. Oh, just look at the state of this. Gosh. Daihatsu Sherrard there. Uh, Mitsubishi Space Wagon or Chariot in some markets. Nissan Bluebird, I think. U11 Bluey. Or is it too small for that? Is that some sort of sunny? Um, uh, I'm not sure I can be bothered to find out, to be honest. Uh, love these Mitsubishi Galant liftbacks. That's a Cordia up there. Little two door sports car. Uh, Sigma Estate. Well, wow. oh, little Mazda one two one. Uh, sold as a Ford Festiva in some markets, and the Kia Pride in others. It's another coupe up there. Is that a Celeste? I think it might be a Mitsubishi Celeste. And uh, I missed another early Lancer there. Just remarkable. I just can't really get over this place. Ah, there is an M11 Prairie. So you see what I meant about the, the windscreen angle continuing down, whereas the Prairie Joy is extended at the front. Uh, an unusual angle of the dangle there. Some of these were four-wheel drive, though. I don't think it's locked. I think it's probably broken. Oh no, there we go. It has left the door card behind, but it does open. But yeah, uh, unlike the first generation Prairie, um, no. Rather, it does have a B-pillar. Uh, see what we go along here. Oh, Holden Tiranas. Um, Holden's variously, in fact, in this section. Uh, there's the, the sheep who look after the scrap here, ginormous digger, 
waiting to destroy its next victims and it looks, looks like it's had a busy time of it. If we look at what's in the pile of scrap here and sadly this is the way. I think more modern stuff, people aren't really willing to pick over them. So they just get smashed up and then um, crushed and bailed and taken away. Which is all a bit sad. Oh look, there's a 190 hiding around here. Very high front end, looks like the engine's gone. Maybe its turn will come to join the piles of scrap. Sad times. Also sad, look, BMW E30 there, that doesn't look too bad. Oh, quite a depressing place to walk around. There's Land Rover Freelander there. UK scrapyards have plenty of those in. And there's a Suzuki Alto up there. I believe so. Not much left in it. Another Bedford CF. Chrysler Neon. Well. Ooh! Try not to fall down the holes. Oh, a flattened Mitsubishi Diamante. Oh, we could have a good game of guess the car here, couldn't we? So many have already been crushed. It's amazing how these things hold up when you um, apply a small case of hydraulics. Gosh, what was it? It was a club, whatever it was. Another Camry with a double rear wipers, a Sangyung Muso. Uh, is that, yeah, that's Nissan's Tirano, which for all the world looks like a Toyota Hilux. Mazda Kronos. New one on me. Ah, Isuzu Mu. Mysterious utility, which may be familiar when it's not quite so disassembled to people as the Isuzu Frontera. Oh, the Frontera had a more angular hard top on the back but it was indeed a mysterious utility built in Luton well oh Ford Taurus these are peculiar looking things uh, I really like them uh, note the rear wiper at the top it's got a pop-up screen uh, an American compact car but bizarrely very curvaceous um, Especially in terms of wipers. Look at the curves on those babies. But uh, yeah, a curiosity. But they did try to make work here as well by the look of it. Uh, Daihatsu Terios. Uh, another Ford Laser. Uh, Toyota Sinos. We didn't get that type in the UK. Ah, now, um, Ford Lasers. Uh, this particular generation, Mazda based yet again. Um, available as this four-door saloon or what I think is a rather fetching hatchback I quite like these uh, it's, it's not the smoothest styling it's perhaps not to European tastes but um, not bad nonetheless I quite like it I see a Land Rover Discovery so I'll go have a nose at that and in a sea of fairly modern stuff that's like a Vauxhall Victor there um, FB Oh, I have all of the sads. Uh, Ford um, Falcon, a slightly later version. And uh, yeah, Disco V8. No, apparently we won't be getting into the boots, because I'm curious. Ah, there we go. Yes, yeah, so look, you see. New Zealand discoveries still have um, actual wheel arches. That's a bit posh, is that? Doesn't look too bad. Ooh, we have a nice Mitsubishi Sigma there. Doesn't look too knocked about. Doesn't look too rusty. Makes you wonder why it's here, really. Quite a nice interior on it. Okay, maybe a slightly mouldy interior. 203,000 kilometres. Oh. 
feel that really could live on. I wonder if it's still got an engine. No. No, well that's gonna that's gonna be an issue. Good grief. Nissan Patrol, the first generation. When I saw one of these this summer at Japan Classic Sunday in the Netherlands, that was the first one I'd ever seen. So I guess this must be the second. That doesn't look too bad, does it? Oh, oh I see the door has pretty much rusted off, but it's here. Um, everything included. Oh, how I wish I could make the wipers work, all three of them. Look at that triple wiper goodness. You got little fresh air vents. You want fresh air vents? Even work. Wow, lovely pickup bed as well. Oh, that's really smart. So if you want a Nissan Patrol, but isn't hopelessly rotten, Horopito Motors, where you need to be. Ooh, Mazda Autozam AZ3. We got those as the MX3 in the UK. It's another DS there as well. Oh, but I can't linger anymore. There is too much to get around. Wow. Good living, that. I won't get too close, just in case someone is, but it's based on a Bedford um, O-Series. By the look of it. Uh, Corolla. Is that a GTI? Oh, no, it isn't. It's um, got the full JDM spec back end on it, though. Wow. Uh, Renault Scenic, unexpectedly. Mazda 323 F. Yeah, yeah, I've got it. I have memories of mine. I'm not sure they're necessarily fun, but we had fun going around Silverstone together. Big old bus over here. Oh dear, looks like it's had a fire. Oh, well, that would ruin your camping experience, wouldn't it, really? Oh, yeah, that has gone bad times. I don't know if that happened before or after it came here. But these poor pantograph wipers have nothing to wipe anymore. Oh dear, no, that, that, that's too tragic, I think. As is this Daihatsu for Sport Track with no face. Uh, I might have called those a Rocky here. Oh, yeah, someone's had the whole front end off it. Ferosa is what they called them here, and in Europe, I think. Sport track in the UK. Uh, this is a Sprinter Carib, and uh, this is the second generation. My Toyota Tercel is the first Sprinter Carib, but they use Tercel in export markets. I always quite like those, I think they're quite funky, but I fear that one. It's a bit beyond help. Oh, well. Peugeot 306, that looks half decent. And still it's in the scrapyard. Poorly BMW E28. Um, not rotting to any great degree, but it's clearly had a hell of a thump at some point. That's a shame. Um, might be some nice interior trimmings. Oh no, it's suffering. Uh, big old Bedford here with some magnificent triple wiper action. Another Austin Maxi and Nissan Presage. And a Nissan Lucino here. And a Wing Road. I almost bought a Wing Road. Uh, but I didn't. Uh, Daihatsu YRV. None of those left in the UK, or maybe a couple. They rot like crazy. Um, that one had rego until July this year, so that's not long off the road. Uh, already been raided for bits, which I suppose is good, that's kind of what they're here for. Uh, Syrian there, got the wipers the wrong way around. Unforgivable, they deserve to die. Oh wow, nice old truck. Missed what that was, going past with a bobcat in the boot. A Ford Falcon like mine. So the question we're all asking, oh I should just point out, they've got very big two-part calipers. Um, on the front of these Falcons. Uh, it's gone. It's also got the tin roof treatment. 
and uh, yeah, that's had an almighty smack up the um, the Yaris, so to speak. But yeah, little, little Suzuki Sooty van there. Uh, looks like a Fiat 125 there, rather than the Polsky version. Coming in for a closer look. Oh, engine's gone. Yeah, well. Uh, I think I'm starting to tire, I'm starting to run out of energy. Fiat fun time! Uh, but then every time I look somewhere else I see something interesting. Uh, four door Honda Integra, we only got them as the Type R two door hatchback. But other versions do exist. Toyota High Ace four wheel drive. Yeah. In short, I think I can say that it's worth coming here. Pay pay your ten um, dollars and come and have a mooch because the place is amazing. Sayats, I'm not seeing many Sayats here. And a lovely Land Rover. Oh, that makes a rather beautiful photo in itself. This really is the yard of a million calendar photos. Honda Orphea, only with the TH pronounced properly. I can't do that, sorry. I know some people get hugely upset by the fact I can't speak. But there you go. Peugeot 307, they're quite rare. We've apparently reached Merc Alley. And also Peugeot's, variously. In fact, look at that. We've got uh, 404, a pair of, 405, and 406. And 307s, but they deserve to die. This still looks quite nice. Oh, someone smashed the windows out of it. Of course they have. Yeah, a sea of brown automatic as well. Um, Merc W123 and 114-5. stroke Depends which engine it's got. Gosh. <laughs> Behind the razor wire. Big Ford Falcon wagon. That's the facelift version of mine. Uh, quite an attractive wagon, I think. Yeah, Merc 220, the original S Class. The the um, well, no, not the original S Class. This is the um, 108, I think. Or was the 108? It's a fin tail. It's a fin tail, is what it is. I am really getting tired now. Uh, Citroen XM, Saab 900, uh, BXs. There you go, Stuart. Might be some decent um, window um, mechanisms going on there. That one's a TRS, which is a fairly high spec. Uh, I don't know what spec this one is. Oh, it's a TRS as well. It's got the side windows. Um, they're worth having. Oh, little Series 1 Land Rover. That is adorable. And finally, for I think I'm starting to tire, what on earth is a Toyota Volts? Well, this is one. Oh, it's locked. Okay, interesting. Uh, Mitsubishi Lancer non Evo with rear wiper. And Lada Samara. And maybe that's where we bring this incredible journey to an end. No, no, I can't do it, because look what we got over here. Is that an Isuzu Gemini? Is it an Isuzu at all? Picking up an Isuzu Vibe off it. I don't believe I've ever seen one of these in my life. It's an SLX, whatever it is. Any clues inside? I would say it stands a good chance of being an Isuzu because of the switch gear. Hmm, interesting little car. So Japanese when the door shut with a clunk. Aha! There is a Pontiac Le Mans. Uh, Korean built Mark II Astra. Mostly sold in America, hence the Pontiac badge, but obviously tried selling a few here as well. Uh, that's an unusual sight. Oh, many a cobweb. Wow. 
yeah, it's not quite the same reassuring clunk, is it? Good grief, an old opal. Uh, contrast is a bit too much to get there. Now, that's an amazing sight. I didn't even know they did these in right-hand drive. Wow, big beefy six-cylinder engine. Well that really is going to have to be enough, what an incredible yard, look at AD90 here, I really like these AD90s, it's like an 80 but it was more fun, um, I'm going to have to say, uh, thank you very much for watching, don't forget to subscribe before you go, uh, don't forget you can buy all the lovely merchandise at hubnut.org and uh, various support options, there's a Patreon option for this trip, um, in which if you sign up to that tier, $10 a month, um, I will send you a t-shirt with a fresh design based on this trip. That is going to happen. I've no idea what the design is going to look like. Uh, I will work it out when I'm back. I'm back in the UK in March. So, yeah, if you wish to support Hubnut um, on Patreon, that's patreon.com slash Hubnut. Nice and easy. Um, or buy things at the shop and George will send them out. Um, may or may not contain hair. Anyway, thank you for watching and I shall see you in a future video. I'm going to lie down for at least several days. I was lucky, I just got locked in. Uh, thankfully he's going in for another trip, but they had locked all the gates and uh, that could have made life interesting. I could have ended up spending the night in a nasty old camper van. Oh, whoa, have a last view. The horror Pito Motors.